So a very good morning to one and all present over here for this session on IPR for a startup ecosystem and career opportunities in the field of IPR. So as we all know that we are reaching towards 75th independence. So on that occasion, our government has initiated uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahasa. And under yeah, that scheme, we are having this NEPAM, that is National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission. And yeah, under that scheme, we are conducting this session. So this session is totally based on IPR for a startup ecosystem and what are all our career opportunities present in the field of IPR. So we'll discuss these two topics in detail so that a clear understanding can be made what exactly the IPR is, what exactly the startup is and how IPR is important for a startup. So let's get started with the session. First question arrives in our mind is what is innovation? Before starting any industry, we need to have some idea or concept. So that idea or concept leads to a implementation of a unique product or services. So when we talk about innovation, so innovation is basically creation, development and implementation of a new product, process or services that adds value in it. So it has to be either product or services or process. But the key significance of innovation is it has to add some value in it. Like if you take example of mobile phones, at the starting age of mobile phones, we were having keypad mobile phones. Later on, innovation took place, research and development took place, and now we are using smartphones with touch sensors. So it's a age of innovation where the keypad mobiles are replaced by smartphones. And that happens only because of innovation. So innovation adds some value. That means initially we are having keypad phones and now we are using smartphones that are much faster than the keypad phones, has large memory space than the keypad phones, has a better camera. So these are all added value in the smartphones. That means some value is added in the smartphones. So the basic feature of innovation is that the creation or addition of value is a defining characteristic of innovation. Innovation in simple words can also be said that it's a practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in goods or services. Either there can be a new product or there can be an improvement of the existing product. These both terms fall under the category of innovation. There are different types of innovation. If we can see the first one is product innovation. Second one is process innovation. And the third one is service innovation. So when we talk about product innovation, it is innovation that deals with the product itself. Suppose we are using iPhones. Many people are using iPhones. The present version that is existing in market is iPhone 13. If we compare it with iPhone 12, there must be some advancement in its feature. So that is at, uh, innovation in phones, that is product and product is mobile phone. So it's a class of product innovation. Second is process innovation. We are, everybody is using Amazon nowadays. So Amazon, what it does, it takes order from the customer and deliver the product. The delivering of product takes place by manpower nowadays. But Amazon has planned that it will deliver the services via drones. So what it is doing, it is doing innovation in a process of delivery. So it's a process innovation. You can see the picture delivery of a product by a drone. So Amazon is doing innovation to improve or enhance or make the process efficient by using drones. So it's a process innovation. Last one is service innovation. We all have seen these ad techs like Unacademy, Study IQ. What these ad techs do is they introduce technology with education and the result of which that we can teach or we can learn anything from the internet. So it's a type of service and it includes innovation because of technology. So it's a part of service innovation. So these are all three types of innovation we can see here. Now innovation in business. Innovation in business is very important because a business to survive, it has to be something new all time. The product must be different from other competitor. The quality of the product must be superior. It has to have appealing look. So all these are the distinguishing features for a business and this all can be achieved through innovation. So in case of businesses, the most 
important part of businesses are to make a profit and how the businesses can make a profit and when the businesses can make a profit when the product is unique when the product is different and these can be achieved through innovation innovation and later on that can be make a unique selling proposition there can be cost reduction methods these are all make a product distinguishing so that is the part of innovation in business you can take an example of snapchat snapchat is a social media where you can communicate through photos in the age of digital media we are using photos to communicate so it's a new type of technology that is innovative technology that snapchat has used so snapchat what it provides to customer is by using photographs you can add something into the photo and you can communicate with others so it's a totally interactive through photos so snapchat did innovation in this uh, technologies and that is why snapchat is a leading social media in this sector so this is a example of innovation in business innovation is an integral and the most unique variable of an enterprise which is ultimately determinant of the targeted market and enterprises aimed it plays a decisive factor in an enterprise decisive factor means it makes a particular company to stand out in large number of companies that can be achieved if the per, if the company the product with high quality low cost high efficiency so that makes the company a decisive factor in an enterprise a necessary element for newly built businesses and startups for newly built business what has to be there there has to be have some unique idea otherwise that startup cannot exist so a unique idea can be achieved through innovation and that is innovation in business for startups a startup is generally characterized by its uniqueness and innovation which later becomes a unique selling proposition so this is all about innovation in business uh this is a terminology invention and innovation there is a difference between in invention and innovation and invention can be a new thing that can be a product or service but it is not necessary that invention must having some commercial significance but in case of innovation it has to have commercial significance then only the innovation can be defined so in our country the central government and various state governments are collaborating to uh, make everyone aware about innovation motivate individual entrepreneurs students about innovation so that can be done through a scheme that is atal innovation mission which is running by government of india the objective of atal innovation mission is to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in the country to develop new programs and policies that motivates for invention in different sectors of the economy it also provides platform and opportunities for different stakeholders the main objective is basically in summary is to create awareness among students entrepreneurs and industry stakeholders about innovation how how the innovation is important for a particular company what exactly the innovation is these are all the subject matter of atal innovation mission and this awareness can be done in various categories that we will discuss in the next slide the atal tinkering labs these are the labs that are introduced by government of india in schools schools of 6 to 8 category 6 to 12 category where the students of that school are motivated or promoted about the latest technology like internet of things 3d printing artificial intelligence machine learning computations and all so these are all technologies which are taught at atal tinkering labs at the school level then is atal incubation centers these incubation centers are basically used to help out the startups and newly built businesses like small entities and all so what they do they are having some business incubators as well those business incubators help those early stage startup in terms of finances in terms of office space in terms of licensing work so they used to help these startups in order to make them exist in this competitive environment then atal community innovation centers these innovation centers are basically set up for exploring the innovation in a deserved area or unserved area like in india we are having northeast that is uh, uh, almost cut off from the mainstream market jammu and kashmir these are unserved and undeserved area so government has set up atal community innovation centers to promote innovation in these sectors of india next is atal new india challenge this module of atal innovation mission is established for innovation in the product of national importance like space sector like defense 
like atomic energy so these sectors are of national importance and these are taken care by atal new india challenge that promotes innovation in these sectors then arise anic challenges innovation in startups and msmes then mentor of change mentor of change is basically a type of guide which are present at all these levels like they are present at atal tinkering labs they are present at atal incubation centers they are present at atal community innovation centers they are present at all the modules of this atal innovation mission what those tasks are those are proactive leaders they guide the students entrepreneurs and the industry stakeholders about innovation they teach the future skills like the technology which is uh, coming into near future they make them aware about those technologies so it's basically a type of guide at all the levels so it makes innovation ecosystem in the country at each level at each level some guides are there they will promote about innovation and that leads to a particular generation of products services or processes next is startup so what is a startup a startup is basically a newly aged company that is uh, registered according to the and it has some conditions to satisfy it has to have not exceed the period of 10 years from the date of incorporation that means the date of registration of a startup shall not exceed 10 years it has to be less than 10 years it can be either a private limited company it can be either a partnership firm or it can be either a limited liability partnership firm and the next condition is that the turnover of this type of company shall not amount of 100 crore rupees those entity that works towards innovation development or improvement of product processes or services or it has to have a scalable business that means it has to have some vision that what exactly they want to achieve if this type of category is there in the companies that would be termed as a startup also it has to have a capability to generate strong employment huge employment then only it is startup provided that the entity which is not called as startup is that if it is formed from reconstruction or splitting from a big company then it won't be called as a startup a startup landscape in india you can see the definition here a startup is a young company established by one or more entrepreneurs to create unique and irreplaceable product or services so unique replace level means what for a startup to sustain in this competition it has to have unique idea that means a unique either product or service or process so this is what uniqueness means here there are around 69000 startup that are recognized by dpiit that is department for promotion of industry and internal trade that gives registration for startups across 647 districts in the country as of may 2022 during 2021 the government has recognized around 14000 new startups as compared to 733 startups in the period of 2016 and 17 you can see a huge improvement in the number of startups and that can be possible because of various scheme launched by government of india like startup india atal innovation mission national intellectual property awareness mission so these are all the schemes that helps india to have the startup in huge amounts this makes india the third country after us china to have most number of startups and a further 44 indian startups in the year of 2021 has been transformed into the category of unicorn that means they have reached the valuation of 1 billion dollar and in the last 3 years you can see the space sector is also grown very rapidly number of startups are increasing in space sector and it has reached to 47 compared to what it was 11 in 2019 so you can see a huge development is happening in the field of startups various startups are growing because government is supporting them in different ways like they are having scheme startup india and those startup india has also some assistance that we will discuss in later the startup landscapes in india what we have seen in the previous slide we can summarize here a total number of indian tech startups founded between 2011 and 2021 is around 25000 to 26000 and 40% of share of a startup follows b2b model what is b2b model there are two types of model that 
takes place in the uh, business sector. The one is B2C model and other is B2B model. You have seen different types of a startup based on B2C model, like uh, the Zomato, Grofers. These are all B2C models because they are delivering the product to customer. So it's a communication from business to customer. But 40% of market share are retained by B2B model of startups. These B2B models, that means they provide businesses between two businesses. Like you can see the example of delivery. Delivery is a, a delivery platform, which is a category of a startup of B2B model that supplies different types of product between two manufacturers, between retailers, between farmers. So this is a type of B2B model startup. Another one is Udan. This is also a type of B2B model. This Udan startup is used to uh, purchase a particular product or services by small scale industries, by startups, by small farmers. They used to go on that site and they can procure those items for their business's purpose. So these two are examples of B2B model startups. Then 44 new unicorns are added in 2021 that we have seen in the previous slide. Uh, 2250, more than 2250 have startups are founded in 2021. 12% share of Indian startups leveraging deep technology. Deep technology is what the technology that is of very high technology end, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, internet of things, blockchain. These are all deep technology. And the startup, those deals with these deep technologies are called as deep technology startups. Examples are Insta, Instoried and Nest. These startups are less known, but they are working in the sector of deep technology in the, as a startup. $24.1 billion are the total equity investment that is raised by Indian startups in the year of 2021. So this was a brief landscape about startups in India. You can see here 44 new unicorns that are added in 2021. You can see various examples you, you must be aware of, like growth. First, Cred, Misho, Grow, Coin DCX, Bharat, market value of $1 billion. And that means they enter into the category of unicorns. And these growth in this type of ecosystem is because of innovation. IPRs and IPRs will discuss later. Everything begins with an idea. Be it innovation, be it any creativity, you must to have an idea. Then only you can work on that idea and come up with a unique product that will exist in the market. So for innovation to take space, you must have a vision that what you want to achieve in near future. Once you have a vision, you have to have idea about what product services or process you want to deliver in the market so that will be idea and that idea has to be uh, something unique or something new and whenever idea comes then comes the role of intellectual property rights because intellectual property rights are uh, intangible asset they can't be sensed they can't be feel they can't be touched they are just a creation of our mind or creation of human minds that can be any idea related to technicality that can be any new design that can be any new logo that can be any new symbol that can be any uh, new literary work those are all subject matter of intellectual property rights so innovation and creativity influence different sectors of society that are responsible for growth and development of a country evolution of new creations and innovative ideas research and development and their application in producing goods and services they help in making the economy stronger and thus it makes the nation stronger in terms of economy their ipr plays a very significant role i will brief you about the type of intellectual property rights just what are all different types of intellectual property rights then we'll proceed with the uh, further slides so basically intellectual property rights are categorized into patents designs copyrights trademarks gis semiconductor integrated circuit layout designs and so patent is property right that is assigned for technical advancement any innovation related to technicality has to be taken care by patent trademark is a logo or symbol that is uh, 
given on a product or services trademark which helps to consumer identify that who are all the originator or source of goods like if you use a product that product must be having some mark or some logo so you will just identify the name of the company by using or by seeing the logo. copyright is granted for literature type of works like if you have written novel or if you have written a book if you are making a film if you are making a music those are all category of copyrights so that has to be registered under copyright act then designs design of a bottle design of a watch design of a sofa these are all the subject matter of design intellectual property rights then semiconductor integrated circuit layout design these intellectual property rights are assigned for like if you use a computer that computer must be having a processor that processor must be having a chip that is used or that is made up of transistors resistors and various other components so configuration of these components are layout and their layout can be registered under semiconductor integrated circuit layout design and then is a gi geographical indication tag that is assigned for a product of its geographical significance like uh, for a particular region where the product is of important then for that product the gi tag is assigned so this is a brief about different types of intellectual property rights but the most important intellectual property rights is patent because patent deals with innovation in technology like initially we were having mobile phones of keypad we have seen research and development took space innovation took place and those innovation leads to some output and that output result or product or service can be registered under patent intellectual property rights so what is the need for intellectual property rights in the ecosystem of startup and businesses for a startup to exist as we have discussed it has to have some unique concept or unique idea once there uh, someone is having unique idea or concept then that idea or concept has to be protected otherwise it can be used by any other person so in that case your idea can be stolen easily so government what governments does they have given a facility of protection of ipr that means you can file a patent application if you are having any idea and if you want to build a company then you can first file a application to government then government will analyze your application then they will grant you a patent if you got a patent that means you will be the owner of that particular idea and now you can use that idea uh, in the manner which you want like if you want to uh, transfer your idea to that is the basic need of ipr so an efficient and equitable intellectual property system can help to realize intellectual property's potential as a catalyst for economic development and social and well being of cultural aspects it helps to strike a balance between the interest of innovators public interest providing an environment in which creativity and invention can flourish interest of innovators are they just want to make a advancement in technology wherever we have to have balance about uh, balance between the interest of innovators and public interest like if a person is doing innovation keeping in mind what public wants then there will be balance but if a person is doing innovation or if a industry is making a product that publics are not using so it's of no use so it has to be understood that what public wants and based on public demands innovation needs to be done a large portion of the estimation of a startup for the most part they get from their ip rights ip rights is very valuable because if you transfer your ip rights you can earn revenue out of that as well so it has been assessed that around 80% of the estimation of new businesses depends on their ip portfolio this means the businesses which are having or which are interested in their ip portfolio they have made their ip portfolio something big then only they can exist or survive because ultimately you have to serve with a new product or service otherwise it of it is of no use so serving by using new product or service you have to have the concept of new idea and that leads to a role of ipr there importance of ipr in startups safeguarding ip is much easier in the beginning phase of your business than after those ideas have become successful suppose a person wants to 
start a company that is in form of a startup if initially that person got some idea but he is not up for patent protection then later on what he will face the problem is everybody can use the concept and make product so there may be a large competitors so for that particular person this idea is of very less use so it is advisable that if you have any idea then go for protection because once you get protected be your property the strengthening of ipr regime has gained further significance in light of government's focus on make in india and atmanirbhar bharat government has launched multiple schemes such as make in india atmanirbhar bharat under which the innovation are supported by ipr in particular the fields are medical and health sector because of covid-19 pandemic we have become uh, more aware about health and medical sciences so lot of you know taking place in these sectors and these sectors uh, are in need of more ipr awareness because any unique any unique product or service has to be associated with ipr ip protection puts legal checks on your competition it helps preventing others from infringement if you have registered for that idea across your name then if you see that other person is using your idea then you can simply infringe that person that means you can stop others from using your idea a good ip strategy from the starting can also help to attract investors what you know when investors sees that your startup has a unique idea and that unique idea is protected as at will that means patent has been granted so that makes much more interesting for the investors suppliers partners uh, because of security and potential success exploring ip possibilities also helps protect startups from claims against them that we have discussed that if idea is protected in terms of patent then infringement can be done uh, infringement can be prevented ip is an asset to our new company thus enhancing your commercial value importance of ipr in startups the driving force behind a startup is a novel idea that we have discussed for a startups to exist it has to have some new or unique idea putting that idea into practice successfully is what transforms small startups into multi billion dollar corporations if i is unique the product will be unique and then the demand of that product will be huge and that will make the startup successful and later on it can be a multi 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 billion dollar corporations ip rights enable inventors and creators to transform their intellectual outputs into tradable commercial assets protect those ideas and concept that underpin your startup a major part of your competitive advantage and attractiveness to investor is how well defined and well protected your ip is in your startups portfolio so this is all about importance of ipr in startups now we'll move to the next slide that is ip strategy it is being said that data is a new oil that means uh, in 2021 the definition of oil is changed initially it was oil that it helps running an economy because of transportation because of industry operations the oil has been changed to data but in field of intellectual property it is being said that intellectual property is the oil of the 21st century similar to the oil which is the basic building block for economy to run ipr is also a type of oil that on which the economy is run because a company has to be successful once it has unique idea once it has unique idea it has to be associated with ipr so ipr is very important for a company to grow to survive and in uh, and in summary you can say that it's helpful for a country in large or a public in large starting what happened the richest man was the uh, person who are expert in extracting natural resources but nowadays the person or the industries they make most part of money because of intellectual properties so intellectual property is very important and it has to have some strategy for businesses to take space reason to secure ip rights for startups it deter other companies from unfairly profiting your of your material if you have created a ipr right then you can simply stop others from using your concept or idea presumption of ownership the same thing like if you are the owner of a patent that means nobody else can use your product protection from infringement suits if you have protected that idea that means that is your property and you can use that property without 
any other person's permission. So that will uh, protect you from infringement suits. Security and investor appeal that we have also discussed that for an investor, if idea is of novel and it is supported by IPR, then the investor become more interested in those type of startups. So intellectual property plays a vital role when it comes to startups for the reason that a startup may put a lot of hard work and capital that it is invested and that could risk its competitiveness in many other cases its existence as well intangible assets that we have discussed like patents designs copyrights trademarks they are very prone to be stolen so they have to be registered in the governments common ip mistakes startups make they just undervalue their intellectual property they have the idea they have the new thing they have the new product or services but they don't focus on these type of intellectual property ultimately what happens when they launch their product, that product or process can be easily copied by any other competitor. And in that scenario, the original producer of that good can't do anything. And there is a loss of business and loss of monopoly. Not creating an IP strategy. They have idea since they are less interested in IPR they won't create any ip strategy so it's a type of common mistake for an ipr to uh, become successful you have to have a strategy like you have to focus on research and development once you received a new product or process you have to apply for patents and significant all intellectual property rights whatever it is applicable so all this needs a strategy and that strategy needs or that strategy can be implemented once it is aware about ipr so awareness of ipr is also very important in startups not keeping the creators communicating the decision makers research and development is taking place and researchers come up with the idea but they are not communicating those findings with the top management that are decision makers so what will happen there will be communication gap uh, the higher administrations are those they will put checks and balances and then the they will launch the product but when uh, outcome of the product by innovators are not communicating then no it's of no use not protecting confidentiality the same way in terms of patent like uh, if they are not registering then it can be used by any person in use ip rights are key economic asset in today's knowledge economy we have seen this how ip uh, rights are important for a scientist for a professor for a startups so economy to survive there has to be ipr and that can be done through awareing because ipr is a very complex thing that people uh, think so it is very necessary to make them aware about what iprs and and how are the applications make of ipr so investors like to see that entrepreneurs have integrated ip rights into their business plans that we have discussed a poor understanding of ip and ip protection is expensive makes it easy for a startup and smes to pop ip considerations to one side some may think that the process of ipr is very complex and costly so because of that they seem less interested in idea uh, in ipr and later on what it happens they result in losing the market business owners need a basic understanding of how different ip rights can be used to advance business goals and how to secure them potential purchasers or investors of the company will consider ip as a core business asset benefit for a startup in ipr we have seen the definitions of ipr we have seen the definition of a startup now what are the benefits for a startup in terms of ipr if an entity is declared as a startup then it has some facility like filing fees and examination fees for startups have been reduced they can avail expedited examination that means that is faster examination uh, in case of examination uh, applicant has to wait for 48 months but in case of expedited examination it has to be expedited uh, it has to be examined before 48 months so this is a facility uh, provided to startup facilitator charge reimbursed for patent application through sipp sipp is a program in which there are some facilitators those facilitators helps in filing of applications of IP prosecution of applications of ipr and those facilitator charge some fees 
but for startups those fees can be reimbursed so these are all three facilities that are provided for startups by government of india in the field of iprs eligibility for a startup or a small entity or education institution in patent filing so there is a rule of indian patent rules rule 2 fb for a startup says that an entity in india recognized as a startup by the competent authority under startup india initiative we have seen the definition of a startup when it will be called as startup uh, the first one was that it, the date of registration or incorporation shall not exceed the period of 10 years and the revenue of that particular entity shall not exceed 100 crore rupees those entities satisfying that criteria will be falling under the category of startup uh, rule 2 fa of indian patent rules for small entity that this you can see here in case of an enterprise engaged in the manufacturing or production of goods an enterprise where the investment in plant and machinery does not exceed the limit for a medium enterprise under clause a so this is all the acts those are mentioned where the limits of uh, turnover is mentioned and based on that limits the definition of a small entity is given in the indian patent rule 2 fa rule 2 ca for educational institutions educational institution means a university established or incorporated by central act a provincial act or a state act educational institution as recognized by any authority designated by the central government or the state government or the union territories in this regard so scheme startup india we have seen the scheme atal innovation mission the uh, objective of that mission was to create awareness about innovation in different levels like in schools in colleges in the startups in the areas of national importance and the another scheme is startup india that is helping startup to grow in providing assistance in terms of ipr providing assistance in terms of funds providing assistance in terms of various other licensing facilities so need for a startup india is that we have seen 72% of the founders which are of less age less than the age of 35 years that makes india a startup global ecosystem we have seen that india in terms of a startup it is of third number after united states and china and that is because of the schemes startup india at an innovation mission there are various limitations still exist such as getting credit paying taxes and dissolving insolvency etc so these type of all limitations are taken care by the scheme startup india that helps in various categories they assist in funds they assist in uh, managing the operational activities startups and entrepreneurship can increase private investment in the economy under startup india government is promoting private investment as well so that the economy can be large various benefits of a startup india is like it provides around 10000 crore of startup funding pool it has reduced patent registration fees that we have seen reduced patent filing and examination fees it improved bankruptcy code to ensure a 90 day exit window it provides freedom from inspection for that particular startup for 3 years of operation it provide a uh, freedom from capital gain tax for first 3 years of operation it helps in creating innovation hub innovation hub under the atal innovation mission new schemes to provide ipr protection to startup firms so those are all key aspect of startup india in you know startup india in initiatives and under that startup india initiatives the scheme for ipr is scheme for facilitating startups this is sip so purpose of sipp is what it is used to impart awareness about intellectual property rights like filing procedure prosecution procedure awareness of iprs it helps to protect innovative ideas it provides customers or applicants to make accessible so the scheme for facilitating startups intellectual property sipp was launched in 2016 and the purpose was to facilitate ipr protection in the startups and it is extend for the further of march 2023 this scheme is implemented by office of cg pdm that is controller general of patent design and trademarks uh, that provides facilitators to startups for filing and processing of their applications for patents designs and trademarks Pro professional charges for the facilitators are reimbursed by the office of cgpdm as provisions under sipp scheme that we have seen that for startups one of the facility was that the fees for facilitator was being reimbursed sipp aims to promote awareness and adoption of intellectual property rights 
amongst startups. Scheme is inclined to nurture and mentor innovative and emerging technologies among startups and assist them in protecting and commercializing it by providing them access to high quality IP services and resources for SIPP. Any startup that is defined as we have discussed are applicable to apply under the category of SIPP. The startup definition there it has been repeated that the rate of incorporation shall not exceed 10 years and the revenue shall not exceed 100 years. Now the next scheme is Kapila. This is the scheme for educational institutions. The full form of Kapila is Kalam program for IP literary and awareness and this scheme is implemented mainly in the higher educational institutions where the main bottleneck is that students and faculty members are doing research but they are not having ample amount of fund to file IPR application so what government does government provide financial assistance to them like you can see here the features of Kapila program is of first IPR awareness that means creating idea about what exactly the IPR what are different types of PR. It also provides fund assistance of around 5600. This 5600 is divided into two components. The first one is 1600 and the another one is 4000. This is the fees in terms of patent. 1600 is the fees of filing of the patent application and 4000 is the fees of request for examination. So in total it becomes 5600. For a institution the limit is 10 application that means 5600 into 10 so for an educational institution the limit is 56000 rupees grant is the limit ipr courses under this kapila scheme there are various ipr courses that has run by the educational institutions uh, those help to understand the concept of ipr you can see here the calculation a maximum funding amount of 5600 per application and for a, a institute the limit is 10 application per institute so total it's a 56000 now we'll move to the next topic we have covered the first topic that is startup ecosystem uh, in ipr now we'll move to the next topic that is career opportunities in the field of intellectual property rights the first opportunity is examiner of patents and designs those roles are for examination purpose like Whenever a person file a uh, application of either patent or design, it has to uh, pass through certain stages. Stages are like first publication, then examination. So examiner of patents and design take care of the examination process. Examination can be done in two ways. The first one is technical examination and the another one is formal examination. In case of technical examination, they have to take care about the search of the prior art that means whether this idea or invention is already existing or not whether it is novel or not whether it is inventive or not and the another one is formal examination in which according to the indian patent acts what are all forms you have submitted so that type of examination are formal so examiner in brief does formal as well as technical examination and those are guided by or those are mentioned by section 12 of the patents act 1970 after examination that report has to be sent to the controller and that report can be made as per the section 13 of the patents act 1970 another role of examination examiner is classification of ipcs ipc means for a particular technology some code has been assigned and that code are used in searching so ipc preparation is that suppose a new technology is coming or combination of some technology making a technology new in that case a new ipc has to be tagged and that classification was done by examiner of patents and designs consideration of observation and proposed amendments there are regular amendments in rules and acts takes place so that has to be understood by these examiner of patents and design in order to discharge their duties a act as chairman or member of opposition board assist controllers in opposition matters administrative supervision of staff working under them so opposition is the common thing that happens in the field of iprs patent is granted or patent is refused in that case that patent has to be challenged by the applicant so that has to be taken care by these examiners similar to the examiner of patents and design there are examiners of trademarks and gi they examine new trademark applications in accordance with the acts and rules of trademarks and gi review the response to examination report examination report like I have told the formal examination and technical examination. These two combination makes a report that is called as first examination report. And this report is sent to 
controller. So review the report uh, response to examination report. Then controller will issue the first examination report to uh, the applicant. Then applicant on the basis of the objections of first examination report comply all the objections. So once the response come to the uh, controller, then examiner has to review the responses and make a new report that is supplementary examination report to put up noting and correspondence to senior officers to guide applicants stakeholders on procedure related to registration and act as a nodal officer between various sections at trademark and the applicants any other work related to the subject by the registrar and other senior officers as per the exigency of the workload so this is the role of examiner of trademarks and gi next is the role of indian patent agent the role of indian patent agent is to assist the applicant to file applications of patents what are our roles and responsibilities the roles and responsibilities are to practice before the controller to practice before the controller means patent agent if a applicant has hired patent agent then the patent agent will file the patent application will participate in prosecution like hearing so these are all take place in front of or before the controller applying for or obtaining patents in india or elsewhere that patent agent can practice or can file patent applications in government of india or in other foreign countries they prepare a specification or other documents for the purpose of the act or of the patent law of any other country for a patent application there are some technicalities like drafting of claims drafting of specifications so these are all bit complex terms and indian patent agent are trained for this type of work they are assisting their applicants in drafting of claims in drafting of specifications in making drawings and all so this is a role of indian patent agent to prepare all documents transact all businesses and discharge any other function as prescribed under the provisions of the act to any proceeding before the controller like if controller wants some forms to be modified then patent agent will be the person that will file the new forms and document the qualifications that is required for an indian patent agent is it has to be a citizen of india it should not complete 21 years of age a degree in either science engineering or technology is required and should have passed the qualifying examination recently the result of patent agent has been announced so the examination of patent agent is basically comprises of two stages the first one is written and the second one is interview so a person who is following or who is satisfying this criteria can simply appear for the next patent agent exam indian patent agent examination controller general of patent design and trademarks of government of india conducts the examination for patent agents each year this exam probes the spirit the knowledge of the patents act and rules in india since it deals with uh, since the patent agent deals with drafting of claims specifications filing of patent application so they must be having sound knowledge of indian patent act and indian patent rules patent analytics the new role that is uh, a big opportunity in the fields of ipr is patent analytics patent analytics are basically patent engineer or patent scientists they do the searching part or drafting part so in any research and innovation based company they need skilled persons to conduct patent searches because if a company is come up with an idea then company has to first search that idea at their own because that idea is inventive or not so that search can be made by patent analytics mostly in nowadays different private companies are having ipr cells and those ipr cells are run by these patent analytics the basic qualification for being a patent analyst is a bachelor in science engineering or technology degree it has to be either of life sciences as well they perform different searches such as accessing the patentability of invention checking for patent infringement and so on so you can see here the patent analytics in this flow chart it does intellectual property search and secondary search next role is indian trademark agent somewhat similar to indian patent agent it's an indian trademark agent so it helps companies to select a new trademark for their businesses conducting trademark search to ensure that the chosen trademark has not been already registered assisting in drafting and filing of trademark applications for the registration of new trademarks and providing legal support for the same communicate with the indian trademark registry on behalf of the clients for the registration procedures they ensure that the is duly registered with the applicable trademark office and in the event of infringement or violation of the trademark they also participate in the 
prosecution part so this is the role of indian trademark agent qualification of indian trademark agent you can see here must be a citizen of india must not complete the age of 21 years so the age shall be more than 21 years the degree of any graduate that is prescribed in rule 148 or is an advocate with the meaning of advocates act so this is the important links you can check here for more details if you want these are e filing like how to file patent in e module so these are all different different links that are shared here and if anybody here is interested in further training of this ipr then they can contact this institute rajiv gandhi national institute of intellectual property management this is situated in nagpur and it's a sole institute in india that provides trading in the field of ipr in around uh, regular or around in each three to four months the training happens so if anybody is interested they can simply contact these phone numbers or they can visit the website ipindia.gov.in so this was all about brief of IPR in startup ecosystem and the career opportunities in the field of IPRs that we have covered. So anybody is having questions in whatever we have studied so far, they are welcome to ask any question if they have. You can ask questions in either chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yes, we'll share the link to you. And even few questions have already there in the chat box and been answered by Starna Bhattacharya. But Anyone else if have any pressing question? Okay, I think, uh... Can an idea be patent or only a product can be patent? The idea has to be in the form of either product or process. Then only it can be patented. That idea has to be in the form of either product or services or processes. Tell us more about prior art and how to do it well. Prior art is basically uh, like if a person has filed for an application. So what are all the technical features? Those technical features are being searched. And if that technical features are found in some document, uh, then that document will be termed as prior art for that invention. And how to do it well? It is to be done well by searching. We have some databases or you can use Google patent to search the prior art. Is there any exam for patent agent or trademark agent? Yes, that we have discussed uh, recently. The result was announced. So Office of CGPDTM conducts examination of patent agent and trademark agent every year but due to pandemic it was not happened in last two years so recently the examination for 2022 was being conducted in 2022 so yes the office of cgptm conducts the examination of patent agent and trademark can we patent a design of an equipment as design patent itself or as a normal patent design of an equipment is not falling under the category of patent it falls under the category of the design intellectual property so if you have some unique design then there is a facility to file design application and if the office finds that the design is new and its uh, design is something appealing to i then the registration for the uh, design has to be granted so it not file under patent it has to file a separate design application we have a query regarding yesterday's sessions on patents if you could enlighten us if there is any specified time period for grant or refusal of patent application post submission of replies to first examination yes it is uh, decided as to be six months once the reply has been filed when you file a reply of fer it is examined it is re-examined within the period of six months but for grant or refusal no deadline has been presented it's totally upon the controller so that is uh, de deadline is mentioned for producing a supplementary examination report once you file reply we will re-examine it within the period of six months from your, the date of your reply but when we send this supplementary examination report to controller it's totally upon the controller then when he or she can uh, grant or refuse this app can someone use the unregistered trademark or it does it comes under infringement yes you can use unregistered trademark but not for hearing and all you can use that unregistered trademark for uh, the drafting of trademark applications and it does not fall under the category of infringement because infringement is like if you are awarded a trademark and somebody else is using your logo without your permission then that is the category of in infringement next question is what if an organization is using a simple as trademark but it is not registered what is the disadvantages of not registering yes you can use the trademark without registration but the disadvantage is that any other person can also use your logo or trademark in that case you will not be able to infringe that person 
usually how much time it takes for granting a patent how to move ahead the process fast the process can be made faster by uh, early publication you can file form 9 and you can have expedited examination by filing form 18a so by using these two methodologies the process can be made faster any other questions yes audible uh, can you be a little louder uh, because your voice is coming but it's not properly audible but initially fitted fitted up in the search patents that already prior art or thing like and patent is awarded if you yeah. so think that how to whether that of his judge is commerciality whether it's someone because i'm finding a lot of file and granted us but finally after five seven years it has not so whether any patent of his has any method just the commercial aspect that we need yes, to that judge that. the commerciality we have a uh, industrial applicably applicability term in our first examination report and based on the consents of the examiner it has to be judged like to file a patent application you will disclose all the inventions all the applications and all the technicalities related to that invention so we'll go through those specification and we'll analyze whether it can be industrially applicable or not so it's totally based on the consents of examiner so once examiner feel that it's it, it is commercially applicable then the section of commercially applicable has to be passed otherwise it is be <coughs> Uh, not allowed in the section so it's totally based on the consents of exam two things you told uh, one is form 18 a we can file yes and another uh, how can we move ahead the process fast form 9 that is for early publication for publication you have to wait of 18 months because when you file a patent application uh -huh. then it will take a period of 18 months to publish your invention so if you want to shorten that 18 months period you need to file form 9 so once you file form 9 then within one month it will get published and uh, when this uh, request for examination is filed yes so once you file request for expedited examination that will be processed within two to three months so if you file form 9 that would be early publication one month when you file form 9 from the date of filing of form 9 after one month it will get published and you can file form 18a that is request for expedited examination form 18a is filled after form 9 or we can fill uh, you can uh, file simultaneously as well when you file patent application or when you file form 1 form 2 you can file all those form 9 and form 18a as well thank you thank you welcome excuse me i was having one query in chat box so how many startups out of 69000 they are making profits and uh, how many of them are in agriculture sector? this uh, i think there are huge number of startup that are making profit because of uh, the role of Atal Innovation Mission and National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission. The count, we need to check whether what is the exact count that are making profit. But it is, from my knowledge, most number of startups are making huge profits. Because as we know that India is a developing country and the market of India is growing day by day. So many startups are doing very well in these sectors. And in case of agriculture sectors, uh, I think 10% of the startups fall under the category of start uh, agriculture because government is nowadays more focusing on the agriculture sector and on the agriculture sector more main startups are b2b model not of b2c customer like i have told this Uran, that is a part of agriculture sector startup what it does it provides a interface for small farmers to sell their uh, what they have grown in their fields so these type of startups related to agriculture are mainly b2b model so there are a number of startups in agriculture sector okay thanks welcome while submitting the complete specification claims should it be in technological language what is the advantage of it complete specification and claims are subject matter that defines what your invention is so it includes all the technicality but in terms of legal it is nothing legal is that you have to take care of just format like for preparing a claim you need to have some format uh, starting of claim should have preface that i slash v claim then numbering of the claims you have to mention independent claims and dependent claims so these are all formats 
that need to be taken care it's not related to legal terms so you have to have technical features all and you had you need to take care of format that is mentioned in indian patent act like for complete specification uh, here mr arnab bhattacharya had mentioned it has to have these sections so this is a type of format that is defined in patent acts and rules so you need to just take care of these formats so advantage is that if you Uh, keep complete specification and claims in the format what it is mentioned in patent acts and rules your application will run smooth otherwise there might be more number of objections and you need to comply in later stages <laughs> and that will make the app uh, the uh, process of your application bit slow so if you comply these uh, formats in initial stages there is possibility that your patent will be granted as soon as it will be passed. Uh, stages of examination and hearing us can it be in scientific language just like scientific article to published scientific language what does it mean i'm not getting this question clearly but it cannot be in scientific publication because scientific publication can be any outcome can be any formula can be any result but for patent application it has to be either product or services if you file any result that wouldn't be expected as a patent so better convert those idea or formula into some sort of product or process then this will be accepted as a patent application yeah regarding the scientific uh, language uh, you know i just want to add is that you know uh, in the scientific articles that we have read okay it starts with the abstract then the introduction part okay and uh, in this uh, you know application for filing a patent also the abstract is uh, put at the end okay after the claims is uh, established as then we generally write the abstract and the introduction part as well as the technical uh, problems what is uh, there in this existing technologies and how it can be overcome using that uh, application is all it needs to be mentioned at the uh, starting of the patent application okay so this is just you know uh, the core point will remain same because the claims should be there because it defines the scope of the invention